Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. With what button do I double click? In what world do you think will let you fire a sick frontline employee? I plugged in the cable like you said and now nothing works. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. With what button do I double click? A single call changed my opinion about the length of union probation at my telco. When a new hire joins us, the company had a probation period of 500 hours during which they could fire without the union interfering, unless it's discriminatory. This was agreed on, as we don't want union members that s asterisk ck so bad that they can't perform adequately. But over the years the duration of Frontline's basic training and integration lengthened so much that by the time hires started taking calls on their own, their probation was essentially over. At first I thought it was a win for the union, but then I get this call. Bytewave, senior line, Bytewave, you may send me your ticket. New guy, hi uh. First call sorry, how do I do that again? I explained thoroughly and nicely, first call, understandable. New guy, yeah okay I found it, but your name isn't on the list. Bytewave, senior staff is listed in alphabetical order, I'm the only name that starts with AB. Disturbingly long silence. Then I finally get the ticket, customer just has no valid IP bail renewal seems to have failed. Happens. Bytewave, okay, I see you didn't reset the modem, do that next time. Sending one now. It reboots, status indicates it's ready to grant a valid IP, but the computer is going to need a release slash renew in this case. Bytewave, okay. Hit repair or CMD IP protocol configuration slash renew and it'll get a valid IP. Most customers find repair easier. New guy, repair? Okay, now I'm getting alarm bells. Bytewave, you got your full training, right? You're with the batch that finished integration last week. New guy, yes but. There's so much stuff. So I, explain about the control panel and bring him to network connections. Tell him how to get to the repair button. He puts me on hold forever. Wishing this guy was a subcontractor at least. New guy, okay, I found network connections, but it doesn't do anything when he clicks on it. Bite wave. Come upstairs to Senior's lab with your wireless headset. I log in an XP box and tell him to get there and press repair. Sometimes a hands-on exercise helps. He gets to the control panel, network connections, and clicks on it. Once. Then he looks at me like this is evidence my instructions were bad. Bite wave. You have to double-click. The migraine was starting to build up, but then we hit the brick wall. New guy, with what button? I'm trying to stay professional. When someone in front of me crosses a certain level of stupid, and I don't want to scream, I excuse myself, go to my desk, grab an Advil, take it in front of them slowly with some water, and then smile. Bite wave, we were saying. Ah yes, for future reference. Double clicks are always done with the left mouse button. The tab is there, repair button here. Now you should be able to finish your call. After closing the ticket, I review everything we have on this guy. His probation just ended. We're bound to defend his job till the end of time now, and I have a feeling, proven correct so far, that new guy will not improve much. I log out, tell my boss I need a union meeting, which they have to grant without question, and 10 minutes later it's me and a steward in a closed room. I relate the story, and my newfound feelings towards the length of the probation clause versus basic training. It's not okay that we don't get a decent amount of time to evaluate new hires doing actual work before we're stuck with them forever. Steward, but. Isn't that just management's problem? Bite wave, no. We don't want to be stuck with tools. It's asterisk CK's tons of mentoring time, makes senior staff's job a pain, and how do you think a guy like that will help the union in a bind? 
Probation clauses were put in 20 years ago precisely because we wanted to have qualified union members able to pull their weight, it's a test. At 500 hours, it no longer gets the job done. The moment we are as bad as subcontractors, we lose our negotiating edge. Steward, okay, I can pitch that. I guess we could draw up a letter of agreement, raise it to say, 700, maybe 750 hours? I've been a steward briefly you don't give them freebies, you make them think it's their idea. Bite wave, uh, we could, but it's also management's problem. More so, really. We don't give this to them free. Strategy should be to ask, when the time is right, how they feel about the length of probation. Of course they'll say they'd like more, and then we ask for something in return, and then draw up the LOA. Steward, of course. You know, there'll be snap elections, we need someone to replace Mike. Bite wave, thanks. But for now, I'm doing more good where I am, you might want to tap Venegra, he'd do fine. So, run this by Union CSRVP? Took a little time, but that was it. The company really wanted this, and they never realized we did too. Six months later, letter of agreement, union allows to raise probation to 735 hours, 21 weeks, in return, company grants us an unrelated new right we wanted. Employees who turn 50 are now entitled to reduce it will their work hours down to four or three days a week if they want and gets to pick their days, based on seniority, without loss of insurance or other benefits besides pay. That is a huge perk for people who can afford it, as by the time you get there, you're making way more money from compound interest on your pension fund than your actual wages, and half the loss is absorbed through lower tax rates. The day I turn 50, I'm so working 21 hours weeks. It's in the work contract now. Instead of retiring semi-poor at 55, I can do three days weeks till I'm 65 and have a ridiculous pension. Company gets to keep skilled workers longer. Win-win. All of ByteWave's tales on TFTS. In what world do you think will let you fire a sick frontline employee? Sadly in most workplaces and especially in call centers, it's not unusual for management to play hardball with sick employees and it's all too common that it works. Even the best job security still requires you to do your part. Turn in doctor papers, get your illnesses documented, etc. But what happens when the nature of your illness prevents you from realizing you were ever sick? All too often you lose your job without even realizing what's happening. Not here, not anymore. Years ago, a frontline employee at my telco with many years of perfectly adequate employment slowly started behaving erratically. His name, Andrew, started popping in senior staff's coaching reports. He randomly gave incredibly implausible diagnosis to customers. I listened to a call where he ranted lengthily about UFOs when a customer's node was down. Colleagues had already noticed he was very withdrawn and seemed to have stopped washing his clothes and all conversations with him ended in non sequiturs. Then, Andrew sometimes just got up in the middle of his shift and walked out. Soon after, we noticed he started sometimes coming in on days he wasn't scheduled to work and took calls without pay. Most critically, he insisted all was fine in the world, if anything he had started looking at everyone else suspiciously like if something was wrong with them. It was obvious something was seriously wrong with him, and the union steward told his manager in writing he needed to be granted extended sick leave immediately, and that the medical office should order an independent expert diagnosis of whatever afflicted him. Scumbag manager instead focused on the fact he sometimes walked out of his shift without warning. Any union employee can do that with mere notification at a moment's notice an email will do, and it just gets taken off your sick days slash hours no biggie. But leave without any warning, and it's a fairly severe offense that rapidly escalates to suspension or being fired for cause. Obviously the guy's sick though, no manager could possibly hold it against him, right? Bite wave, senior line, bite wave, you may send me your ticket. Andrew, oh, never mind. I have to go. Boss seems angry. What? I look down, I can see his desk from senior staff's upper half floor. His manager is talking to him. He had a customer on the line, 
he actually sent me his ticket and then he just hung up out of the blue and followed the manager. Next to the manager's desk was a reliable and trustworthy guy. I get his extension and have him on the line in seconds. Bitewave, Thomas, your boss is coming to his desk with Andrew, I'd like you to keep this line live a minute and listen to what's going on. Andrew shouldn't even be here by now, we're all worried. I'll erase this call from the recording software afterwards. Thomas complies happily. Within a minute, it's obvious what's happening. Not only is his manager berating him specifically about the fact he recently left the floor without warning, but he says the magic number five times, grounds for five disciplinary letters, exactly enough to fire someone for cause. Andrew clearly doesn't even understand what's going on from what Thomas tells me in hushed tones, but he says he's very agitated. This is an obvious case of wrongful termination, any arbitrator will give us this one straight up, especially given the union had formally recommended he receive independent medical analysis. But it's way too risky when the guy is convinced all is fine in the world and may end up saying he left voluntarily. Best force the issue. I dial the floor's union steward, mute him, and conference in building security. Bite wave, senior staff, priority call. We have a very agitated employee who must be taken to a secure room temporarily. Suspect serious medical issue, please alert emergency services immediately. While the scumbag manager is still explaining what the letters in his hands mean, three building rent-a-cops walk into the floor like their life suddenly has purpose. It's not every day they get to do something other than use the outdoor cameras to zoom on cute chicks walking down the street. Yes, they really do that. They swiftly take Andrew to holding over the manager's protests, any medical crisis is supposed to trump management say so. Twenty minutes later paramedics and police are all over it, while the union steward has dragged the manager into the director's office. Soon after, Andrew is on extended sick leave and under care against his will sadly, but his condition required it. We hadn't forgotten that management had been given written notice two months ahead of time about the problem and much less what this specific manager tried to do with the info. Plenty of grounds for a grievance. Fast forward a year, the grievance is granted in arbitration, and the union's health and safety VP now has power to order medical examinations on advice of the council if management fails to act on such a recommendation, and the offending manager has been relegated to an obscure low-level position where he can do no harm. He's in charge of letters about contract changes notifications to customers still too good for him, but at least out of my sight. All of Bitewave's tales on TFTS. I plugged in the cable like you said and now nothing works. Just a quick reminder that some people really have no tech skills whatsoever. Also mobile format, sorry. I went to a client's house to look over their laptop and monitors which weren't connecting. When I arrived, I noticed the client had a USB hub connected to their laptop and a docking station, which was located underneath the table, connected to the hub. This has nothing to do with the actual issue I was there to fix, but I suggested to the client that they buy an extension cable so they can plug the USB hub into the docking station directly to power the USB devices. The client listened to my advice and bought an extension cable from me. I arrived into work the next day to the following email. Hi Fwag. I came into the shop yesterday and the attached blue cable is what you sold me. It does not work with my setup. Do you have something that will? Client. There were two photos attached to the email, one was the cable I sold them, and the other was of the hub with every USB cable still plugged in, including the docking station USB cable. I had to point that out to them and needless to say, I haven't heard from them since. Bonus, I spent two hours on a call with a call center trying to get a VoIP password for a client. The password the company provided my client was incorrect and the password they provided me was similar, but also incorrect. After two hours with them I decided to try a mixture of the passwords they had provided, mainly different capitalization, and got the phones to work. Turns out they gave me a password with too many characters, and my client a password with the wrong capitalization. Just had to use my client's password, with the capitalization from my password to get it. I love my job. 